Okay, this week is Beaglebone. Beagleboard. Yeah, but Beagle it's... Beaglebone is the product. I know, but it's... Be, yeah, that's how I know it. You call it Beaglebone, right? I call, I call it Beaglebone sometimes, too. But yeah. Beagleboard.org is the group. Yeah. And this is the... They design uh, single board computers, and they have a new one. It's like if people remember the Beagleboard uh, original and the Beaglebone, uh, they have a new one called the Beagle Play. Single so it's Play. Pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, so this is the Beagle Play. It is chock full. Uh, this has like everything in it. Is it is a uh, ultimate uh, all possible connections available. New York's hottest Dead club board. is Beagle, Beagle board. board. Yeah, it's it's there. It's all there. This is the uh, this is the back of the board. Um, so this is a base. It features a ton of um, chips from TI. The main core is I'm trying to remember. It's eight the Citara um, AM six. 254 it's a quad core uh a53 chipset uh it's also got a cortex uh m4 in it and it's got like tons of add-ons so you might be familiar from this of this board again their their previously most popular board was the beagle bone which had actually a couple of spin-offs there was the beagle bone green and the beagle bone ai but the beagle bone it, you know it was a predecessor to the raspberry pi the raspberry pi came afterwards um and this board was really neat because it was a single board computer it had uh, Ethernet, it had DC power in, and USB, and a lot of GPIO. And it was very inexpensive. It was about 60 bucks, which is, um, you know, at the time was was pretty amazing considering that, you know, PC-104 boards easily started adding up and could be a couple hundred bucks a piece. So all here because of the Chumbi. We really are all here because of the Chumbi and the Beagle. If you like the Raspberry Pi, single board computing, go bunny. Thanks for bringing this into the world. For makers. Uh, for makers, yeah. yeah. This was, it was like, every we all saw it and we're like, oh, wow. This is yes, awesome. it's cool. And I remember BeagleBone came out and I was like, this is awesome. It's very cool. And we, we yeah. heard it. And the thing is, is that, uh, and there's also, um, you know, the, the BeagleBoard XM. This is actually the original one. And this was cool, but I think, I think we remember like why this was not as popular. I think it was just really hard to, it had more hardware connected. You see, there's like two audio. Um, but it, I think it was tougher to connect to the GPIO. I think the GPIO wasn't easily exposed. There was like a point two mil or a two millimeter pitch header or something. Um, but this was like the original. And then you know this is that's available. And then the the Beagle Bone is still available as well. Uh, and this has um, we have support for it, and a lot of people have support for it. So the Beagle Play is um, this is like when you're new. going to when you're on a website and you're ordering something like a pizza. And you're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna put everything on it. Okay, you want broccoli, you yeah. want yeah. ham, you yeah. want pineapple. Yeah. Okay. I want Rockstar meatball. I want pineapple. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot. Um actually, you know what? Let's go to the next image first. And then we'll go back because yeah. this one is actually a little easier to talk about. Okay, so the main core there is the AM sixty six two five four. Like I mentioned, it's an A fifty three cortex. Quad core, I think it runs at 1.3 gigahertz. There's also a Cortex M4 subprocessor in there. Um, it comes with, there's on chip SRAM, but then there's an additional two gigabyte of DDR4 memory and 16 gigabyte of EMMC. So that's where the um, file system and operating system live. Um, there's a real time clock, the BQ32002. On the other side, you'll see the battery holder for it, which I think is really useful. It's like a lot of times people have an add on to um, their uh, Raspberry Pi where they add a real-time clock, but this is like all built in and ready to go, even with the coin cell battery backup, so you can pull power and it will know the time even if the internet doesn't connect. Uh, there's the TPS652191 PMIC. That's just the power management because there's a lot of rails on this board. Um, the wireless and connectivity is really interesting. So they, they I don't want to say they went overboard, but they kind of went a little bit overboard in a good way. So they've got gigabit ethernet with the RTL 82100, uh, or sorry, 8211F. And they have a separate uh, single pair ethernet. That's the RJ11 on the other side. And that's with the DP83 um, chipset. Those aren't like the controllers. I think those were only like the FIs. I think, you know, the ethernet support is of course built into the, the SOC itself. For um, wireless, they've got the, um, they've got WL82, sorry, W, L 
1807, that's a dual band, so 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, two separate antennas. The antennas come with the board, and they have a separate CC1352 uh, P7, and that provides BLE and sub gigahertz. Sub gigahertz in this case is um, Zigbee or Thread and other 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, sorry, yeah. 2.4 gigahertz, I think 900 megahertz. It doesn't have LoRa support, by the way, because I looked and I was like, okay, it doesn't do LoRa, but it does do like basic packet radio. Um, so there's also two antenna ports for that as well. So let's go back one. So it's the main chips. So it's like 15 weeks. There's all the fixings. There's all the fixings. So um, starting at the top left, we'll go clockwise. So there's the real time clock battery. So I showed you the real time clock on the other side. You'll need a um, CR1220, just pop it in there to get battery back up. There's user LEDs. Um, they blink when you power it on and all that good stuff. Um, there's a JTAG connector and this uses that like quick JTAG link or something. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like, it has little press fits and you, and you plug it in. So you want a JTAG connect to the AM uh, 6254. You can do that. Um, the micro bus, so this is uh, for microelectronica, and they have like a, like a thousand different breakout boards for like every single SPI, I squared C or UART or ADC board, and you can just plug them right in. So there's a socket um, ready to go, and there's like the little outlines showing the three different sizes. Um, there's OLDI, which I was trying to research a little bit, and I didn't get very far, but I believe it's like LVDS compatible. There's CSI2, so that connector there is the camera connector, and it's pin compatible with the Pi Zero camera connector. So if you want to use it with Raspberry Pi cameras, just get the Pi Zero to camera connector. Then there's Grove expansion. Um, and that gives you, you know, uh, UART or um, I squared C or there is like an analog output Groves. I don't think that there's an ADC on here and I couldn't, I couldn't find that there's an ADC on the chip itself. So I think it might not support the analog input Groves. It only does like your I squared C and GPIO. There's a quick expansion. So this will work with all of our STEM IQT boards as well. So that's a ready to go I squared C and um, they have a tutorial I'm actually using. This is like the one thing they had a really good tutorial on. There's a user button that you can use. There's a separate micro SD storage. Uh, that's not the main operating system storage, although you can boot from micro SD card um, if you want to configure it. Why not? You could, but you could use the onboard storage, the EMMC, which is going to be nice and fast, and then the micro SD for you know data logging or whatever, and that's you can mount and unmount it. Uh, there's a reset button. Again, there's that JTAG connector. Oh, sorry, there's a separate JTAG connector for the um, TC1352. That's the wireless connectivity. A power button, you hold that down to turn on the power and connectivity LEDs for like all different connections. And then the single pair Ethernet, which I found interesting because I've never really seen a single board computer that had a uh, single pair Ethernet. And um, on one hand, it's pretty cool. Could be that a lot of robotics and automation are moving towards single pair Ethernet. We covered it in a previous INPI. Um, if so, then you can, you know, maybe get power and data over one cable, and that could be really good for robotics and stuff because it's a nice small board with four mounting holes yeah this could be robotics board home automation board yeah it could it could be both yeah it's also got gigabit ethernet and hdmi out 1080p um yeah. hdmi from the built-in it's and the beagle bone had a separate chip that did it this is actually like natively on the on the uh am uh 6254 core USB A 2.0 host. So, you know, there's only one USB port. So if you're used to Raspberry Pi or like that, had four ports, that's because they had a hub built in. Um, you can just attach an external hub um, if you need. There's a UART debug header. So, you know, ground arcs and TX and USB C. Um, I'll be honest, I actually didn't use the USB connectivity, um, but it probably, if you plug into a computer, it like shows up as um, a gadget device. Um, it's also used for power. So I just plugged it into my, you know, USB C. Um, power plug and it worked fine. Okay, so that was a lot. So okay. let's get into some of the parts. So the main core is um, the AM sixty two five series. It comes in one two four core. This is the four core version. Um, max frequency one point four gigahertz, sixty four bit. Uh, has Linux support, so um, you can check out. There's a bunch of hardware um, support here. It's got CAN, GPIO. SPI, I squared C, um, rotary encoder, et cetera, et cetera. Tons of tons of gray boxes. Tons, tons of gray boxes. Um, there is a tutorial on using 
I squared C for the Stemma and Quick. I believe that it, it might only have I squared C support um, via Grove, but um, a lot of things are I squared C, so you'll you'll be good for that. And then what we're gonna do is like I just got this. We're gonna get Blinko working on it, so you can use all of our um, yeah Circuit Python library drivers. Which is great timing because you know um, for the folks who are like, well, I need a single work computer, and I, you know whatever. I'm just gonna get something now instantly because I can't wait for Raspberry Pis. Well, it's not even just it, that. I mean, like to be honest, it's like under a hundred bucks. It is actually cheaper to get this than to get a Raspberry Pi, add the EMMC, add the real-time clock. Yeah, you can't get all these things separately. <laughs> single pair. And if you use Blinka, which we're going to have, if you've done Python the thing, then it works everywhere. So that's kind of the reason we did it, because we're like, well, maybe one day um, people are going to be using all these single board computers, and yeah. we don't want to rewrite the drivers every single time. Yeah, so it's a, else, a lot of stuff. And what's nice is, so the only thing is there's no GPIO, right? The GPIO, if you know there are any, are on the micro bus. Um, not a ton. So that's the only trade-off. You can't like plug in existing hats or bonnets, but it kind of has everything built in already for, I, I think for a lot of situations where people are using Raspberry Pi, but they don't need GPIO. They just don't need to connect like accessory boards. Um, this is a no solder solution. Yeah. And it's uh, I like that. I actually kind of like that they went a different direction. They're like, we're not going to try to make a Raspberry Pi killer. Yeah, well, that's kind of a waste of time. I, I feel like there's this like, what's the Raspberry Pi killer? It's, you know, banana pie, orange pie. Like, this is something different. Yes, and, unique, so and I, I like that. like that they went in a different direction. That's right. Okay, that's this week's item FBI. Right, it's it available out. now. In stock. 662 in stock. Yeah. Hi, on FBI.